Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here with Evan Brand. Today we're going to be talking about how to boost your immune system and clear your sinuses, especially in the context of dealing with kids because most sinus issues become the gateway to sinus infections and ear infections and lots of other goodies in the throat and potentially the lungs. So excited to dive in on today's topic here with Evan. Evan, how are we doing, man? What's cooking? Hey man, not too much. Good to see you here. And yeah, yeah, I mean, this conversation was inspired because you and I, if we go out in uh, groups of people, whether this is a grocery or church or a social event, you're going to hear and see lots of people with tissues in their hand, people with runny noses, people with sinus problems, people with uh, coughing, people clearing their throats, people sounding like they're hacking up a lung. And Many of these people, if they get miserable enough to go to an ENT doctor, they're likely just going to mm -hmm. get a prescription. Maybe it's a steroid inhaler. Maybe it's an antibiotic. But none of this is addressing root cause issues, and these people continue to suffer. And obviously, this affects – it could lead right. to headaches. It could lead to – reduce productivity. Maybe you're even taking off work because your sinus headache is so bad. You're depending on something like Excedrin or maybe some other, uh, maybe an antihistamine. So conventional stuff is steroids, it's antibiotics, antihistamines. Maybe yep. there's Mucinex, which is, if you look into it, it's actually relatively natural in its origin. Yep. But but that's about it. That's about as far as it goes. Yeah, I mean, you have mucinex, which comes from the from guaiac bark, from a guaiac tree, which does help break up mucus. In the functional medicine world, we're going to be trying to get to the root cause. So we have palliative modalities that support the oxidative stress, support the inflammation. We can add N-acetylcysteine in that, which is a mucolytic. It does help with oxidative stress. It does help increasing glutathione levels, which are really important because if you end up giving your kid Tylenol, I mean, you can look at Tylenol and glutathione connection. Tylenol totally depletes glutathione levels. So if you're doing acetaminophen slash Tylenol, that's in a lower glutathione, and that's going to impact your ability to either you or your kids to deal with oxidative stress. And again, NAC has been used as an IV to deal with Tylenol-based liver failure since the 60s and 70s. So this isn't new stuff, but people don't know it, and they aren't applying it at home. So NAC is going to be powerful for the mucolytic, breaking up the mucus, because if we don't get the junk and the mucus out of our sinuses, that which the mucus, especially as it goes from yellow to green, that's the dead immune soldiers. That's your immune system going after and killing viruses slash bacteria, and that's the remnants. That's the debris. And the more that debris sits on the battlefield, right, you can kind of go back to like a World War I type of um, meme or analogy in your head. If you leave, if, if all the soldiers stay on the battlefield after they pass, well, guess what? That's how infections start, right? Same thing in your nose. When those immune soldiers hang out and they're there and they've all kind of been, been uh, they've already sacrificed themselves to go after the bacteria and virus. If you don't move that, that's going to put more stress on the immune system. And that's going to allow these the, the junk and the remnants to spread more bacteria through the eustachian tube that, that comes here. It's more parallel for kids. Uh, as you go into adulthood, it kind of moves a little bit more upstream. So there's a little more gravity helping against it. But with kiddos, it's a little bit more horizontal, more flat. And so this junk here can move its way into the ear. And this is how most ear infections start. And so we can work on cleaning out the sinuses with a good high quality saline, distilled water or you know RO water and saline packets. I'll do one to two. And, and we'll start with that. We've got to make sure we're not using tap water or bread or water. It's got to be a high quality filtered water, not even Berkey, but either RO, distilled, or just a really good brand of, of mineral water mixed with the packets. And then I'll always add in like a drop of iodine in there. So just because that will help with the biofilms and break up any of the junk so it flows out the nose better. But I'll let you kind of comment on that. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great. And truthfully, a lot of people don't have any data on themselves too. So they don't even know what they're up against. I mean, you can have strep, you can have staph, you can have candida. So if you're battling issues in the throat, maybe this is giving you like a scratchy voice or you feel like you're discongested where you have to kind of clear your throat a lot, there could be a true fungal infection that's happened. And maybe this was after a round of antibiotics. Maybe you had a dental procedure and you got antibiotics for it and now you have some sort of thrush that's happened. You can obviously look at your tongue. Hopefully your tongue is nice and pink, but most people that we see clinically, I'll ask them all the time on, on camera, like, Hey, let me check out your tongue. And most people, they either have scalloping on their tongue or they have some sort of a white coating on their tongue and it's not good. And so this is a clue, but obviously if you suffered with this and it's been ongoing for weeks to months, then I would say you should probably look at doing a, maybe either a urine organic acids or maybe a stool because I find that at least for my kids, we have to kind of cycle on and off 
pretty much all winter and when they're around all the kids at school, we're cycling on and off blends of antimicrobial, antiviral, antifungal herbs. So it could be like one week on, everything's great. We kind of let off a little bit and then boom, runny nose hits again. We're like, uh-oh, and then we'll just hop back on the herbs. And so the cool thing about the herbal medicines you and I implement is that they're broad spectrum. So we don't have to fully know what's going on. We can look on the test and, and try to pick a couple of bad guys, but we don't have to fully know what's happening because these blends can pick up other things. So like, for example, we could give a blend that is killing bacteria, but it happens to be a virus or it could be a fungal infection that we're hitting. And also too, if you come out of the gates and your kid starts to get a little bit sick and they have some runny nose or stuffy nose and congestion and cough, well, the last thing you want to do is go run to your pediatrician because most of these things start out viral and then end bacterial. And so if you go throw an antibiotic at this, it's not going to touch any of these viral issues. And so then now that creates more superbugs. So then when your kids have that viral issue and then now it starts to become bacterial, now you have more superbugs because you're wiping out all the smaller, weaker strains. And now the stronger strains hang out and you're not really getting to the root underlying issue. And so you have to do the sinus irrigation, sinus flushing. I mean, just I'll go in the shower when I'm really congested, like let's say yesterday morning and I'll, I'll you know, use all the steam and let everything move out and I'll blow my nose and I'll get a good chunk of mucus out. And then five minutes later, I'll go flush my nose out with the sinus bottle and I'll get exponentially more mucus that just came out a minute ago because you're getting mucus that's way up here. And a lot of that mucus is sticky and sludgy. And that's why I'll use some of the Exlia Rescue that has some herbs that knock out biofilms, which kind of takes the stickiness out of the mucus. And then we'll use saline with the iodine and we'll, you know, maybe even put some silver in and we'll rotate between iodine, silver, or hydrogen peroxide. And that will start to move and break up that stickiness, break up the biofilms and allow it to flush out. And if you don't get that sludge out, this is what's going to put the breeding ground in place for that viral issue to turn bacterial and for that bacterial infection to travel down or up the, you know, the ear canal into the ear through the eustachian tube, or it post nasal and can go down the throat and create the scratchy throat and the chronic cough. So you have to look at this and get it at the root so you can prevent these infections from spreading. Yeah, well said. Let's hit the the nutrition piece too. I mean, I think for, especially for kids, I mean, for adults too, but I mean, processed pasteurized dairy to me is going to be something to avoid. So if you're battling this and you're still doing dairy, maybe you're doing a gluten-free pizza, but it's still just loaded with cheese. You know, that's probably not a good idea if you're battling the sinuses. How do you see the nutrition side? Yeah, so I'll give you a, a case in point. So my wife and I were heading to uh, Mexico last week for like a little four-day kind of getaway, first getaway since we've had really the kids. So it was kind of amazing to just have that time of peace and relaxation. But before we left, my son Aiden started having an ear infection. And we're like, ah, shoot. And just like, you know, we're leaving him with his Nana and all this stuff. And so the first thing we did just as a plan B was we actually got him a prescription filled for amoxicillin. Now, in the back of my head, I'm like, we're not using this. I'm going to I'm gonna fix this thing. But I got to have a plan B because if I'm going to be gone, like, you know, what are we going to do, right? And so what we did was, I'm like, all right, I looked at his diet. I'm like, I brought him to get Andy's ice cream, you know, vanilla custard the other day. I'm like, there's dairy there. That's a treat. Right? That's like a once in a while treat. We're cutting out any milk chocolates that he was having. So we got him back on the unreal dark chocolate with coconut for a treat, but we cut everything out. So it was just meat, vegetables, and fruit. That was it. There was no treats. And then when treats were added back in, we just were very vigilant about keeping any dark dairy in it, in it gone. So it's just like high quality dark chocolate, maybe a little bit of coconut using some of the unreal stuff. And <clears throat> I propped them up at night to allow drainage down the throat. We flushed out his nose. We used some good antimicrobials, astragalus, uh, reishi, yeah, we tried some stuff in the ear, but it was an inner ear issue. So, it, you know, it, it was all the pressure. And so we tried to get the mucus down with the mucolytics. So I used some mucinex with the guaiac bark. I used some NAC. I used, I flushed out his nose. I used some of the x -Lear. I did use just a little bit of Afrin, very small amount, just to keep the sinuses open, just to allow better drainage. And then that night it was totally gone, right? And then the pediatrician was like, oh yeah, we're going to have to, you know, do antibiotics. And I'm like, okay, we'll see, right? Because we're looking at it from a root cause perspective. They're not. They're just looking at it as like damage control. They don't even care about how all this came to be. They're just like, all right, let's just fix what's there. And we were able to avoid any antibiotics and that next night he was fine. And yeah. also propping him up was super helpful because that created just gravity to allow things to drain. Because if you're horizontal, just everything can just sit right there. And so propping him up at a you know 30 degree angle was big, getting all the mucolytics in there. And then, yeah, we added in some reishi. I added in some astragalus. I added in some elderberry. 
I added in some wild cherry bark, right? We did things to really support, you know, the immune system because a lot of these herbs, they're going to work by increasing natural killer cells. They're going to work by helping with the, the T cells, better antibody response. And then we're trying to use a lot of mucolytics to thin out the mucus and then be able to flush it out of the system so it's not hanging out, creating fertilizer for secondary bacterial infections to grow. Nice. And, you know, as a parent too, a lot of times you feel somewhat of this responsibility to really take action quickly. And so I think a lot of parents out of fear and somewhat out of guilt, they run and they go do conventional treatments, which then may have a lasting impact on the gut, for example. So if we role play and say, okay, you get afraid, you jump on the amoxicillin and now there's a gut issue. And now there's a, a, a thrush problem. There's a candida overgrowth that's happened. Now you're battling that. Now there's sugar cravings. Maybe there's like emotional outbursts that you're battling. Maybe you get some strain of strep that grows back and then you get some like emotional issues with the kids. So I think it's wise to be prepared and listen to these conversations like we're having now so that you can have your stash ready. So you mentioned having some medicinal mushrooms on hand and yeah. If you're an adult, obviously you can take capsules, but it's really easy to blend these things into smoothies. So Dr. J and I, we manufacture different types of protein. Like we have a beef protein that you could use. It's chocolate. You could throw in medicinal mushroom capsules in there and you could, you know, open it up, blend it. The kids are going to love it. My kids think it's literally ice cream. Our uh, Emma, who's 19 months now, she was saying it this morning. I made a chocolate one, just filtered water, ice, chocolate, beef protein. And she goes over to my wife, mommy, ice cream, ice cream. Mm -hmm. So she's spoon feeding her this. Yeah. I didn't put anything extra in there, but I could, if I needed to, I could put in, you know, some of the extra mushroom powder. Yeah. And then also, you know, we haven't even mentioned vitamin C, which every single person is deficient. You and I've run thousands of organic acids tests. It's yeah. rare and less most common supplementing. So that's easy. And it's like so cheap. And you could get a clean sodium ascorbate. I mix it in with like a little bit of kombucha or just like blueberry juice for the kids. I'll just go high dose. I'll go like a gram twice, two, three times a day. And that's also very, very amazing and broad spectrum. Yeah. What I'll typically do is like start it off with a lot of liquid supports. And so I'd have a liquid vitamin C. I'd have a liquid reishi. I'd have a liquid astragalus or an immune support that has astragalus, maybe some echinacea, maybe some andrographis in there. And I would start with something like that. Very simple. Bump up the immune system. You know, be on top of the sinus flushing and the irrigation. And that'd be a great start. And then I've gotten my kids at their age to swallow pills, no problem. Nice. And so that's been a game changer. Once you can get your kids to swallow pills, the key thing out of, out of the gate is when you put pills in your mouth, they start off dry, obviously. And then if you just start to swallow them right away, as they start to get wet, they get sticky. So if you pop a pill in your mouth and you swallow it right away, the chance of it sticking in your throat is super high. So I always tell patients, either permeate a little bit of saliva in your mouth put the pills in your mouth, let them all get wet. Now they're like, they're slick and now they slide down the back of the throat or put like, you know, a little sip of water. So there's water in your mouth, put the pills in, just mix it for a second or two and then swallow it. That decreases your kid, your kid's chance of uh, choking or having anything stick in the throat. And then, you know, my wife and I just do it and we just make it cool. Like, look, we did this. And then they, they want to be like mom and dad. And so they, they want to do it too. So it doesn't become a problem, but worst case, we start off with the liquid ones. And then if we need to, um, like in the, I remember when I started at NAC, we do like maybe a little bit in some applesauce or get a little bit of wild honey and just put half a pill right on the honey and then just give it that way. Or we mix it in some coconut yogurt, add maybe a little bit of collagen peptides in there and some uh, blueberries and we do it that way too. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Obviously uh, out of the gate, it's just easy to be, especially if you're a busy parent, you're getting up in the morning, you got to go to work. It's like open up, boom, here's a, a milliliter of Rishi times two. Here's a milliliter of astragalus. Keep it simple. And then you can move on with your day versus going through all these hoops and hoping your kid finishes the drink or finishes the the yogurt because you don't want it to go to waste, right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and we're recording this right now when it's minus two degrees uh, where you are and not much uh, warmer here. And so a lot of these kids, they're not outside and they're vitamin D deficient as well. So, I mean, I see the good benefit for adults, probably five to 8,000 IU a day of vitamin D for, you know, probably November to March for most places in yep. the U S and for the kids, you know, I think somewhere around two to 4,000 IU would be fine for kids. There's a lot of cool papers showing that vitamin D deficiency reduces the uh, diversity in the gut, meaning if you don't have enough vitamin D, you're more likely to have dysbiosis and a lot of the immune system is coming from the healthy microbes anyway. So yes, you can do probiotics. You and I manufacture probiotics that kids yep. can take and adults can take as well. Obviously the more beneficial microbes we can put in there and crowding out the bad guys, like with our Saccharomyces boulardii, that's also key throwing in the D throwing in the C you mentioned 
like astragalus, which I, I personally love, and also, you know, hatunia. So kind of like uh, mm. petunia, but with an H. So hatunia is awesome. And I've personally taken it for years just because I battled Bartonella, but hatunia is an amazing antiviral. So I have that in tincture form. And so I'll take some of that and I'll give it to the kids. And surprisingly, they'll take it, no problem. And also, I had another one. So, oh, the Takuna, which it's that's the brand name, but the product is like mm. Cecropia Bark. And that is just a broad spectrum where if someone is confused, they don't know what they're battling, you take that and you could take it every 15 minutes if you need to. But man, I tell you, within a couple of days, anytime I'm I'm getting knocked down, I'm pretty much back on my feet two, three days max. No, uh, that that's exactly the way to do it. I love that. Um, but in general, you know, I look at it as out of the gate. Well, someone's also commenting about like dry sinuses. If you have good saline, right? You have good clean water, right? RO water or distilled water. Then you're adding a good saline packet. I'll do one to two saline packets, or you can get the extra strength meal med. We'll add that, and that makes it pH balanced. That's going to be hydrating to your mucous membrane, and that's going to keep your nose nice and hydrated, keep that tissue nice and moist. It's going to be the equivalent of eye drops for dry eyes, right? And so obviously, too, make sure you don't overdo it with the NAC because if it's really dry, NAC gets a mucolytic, so it can also dry out the mucous membranes. And then just be on top of the good fats, be on top of the fish oil, be on top of the cod liver oil with the vitamin A. That will definitely help keep the mucous membranes you know, hydrated and on the moist side. And then you can always do a, a nebulizer if you need to because nebulizer will provide good moisture up there. And you can always add like a low dose you know, silver or something that's going to be gentle but still have a good antimicrobial effect mixed with saline. Yeah, well said. We forgot to mention the nebulizer thus far. Yeah, the nebulizer is a game changer too if you don't know exactly what you're battling. And, you know, we're still seeing a lot of corona float around. I'm hearing cases of it every week. And NAC, that's going to be supportive. Glutathione can be supportive. So I would say look at those things. And then also this guy here in the comment, you know, they mentioned there was blood in the stool too. So I would do a stool test too just to see what's going 100%. on. Maybe – Maybe the blood and coming from the nose is not related to the blood in the stool, but man, if anytime that's happening, I'd like to know what the heck's going on internally. Also, too, eighty percent of your immune system is going to be in the gut. It's in the gut, in the stomach, in the gallt, and in the malt, the mucosal associated lymph void tissue, and the gastric associated lymph lymphoid cells tissue. So, you know, if you don't, if you have poor gut function, if you have gut inflammation, that's going to be a big driver. So, with my son, when he had the sinus issues uh, last week. I mean, for me, it, it was really simple coming off the holidays. We had maybe had just a little bit of extra treats. We were out doing a little bit more fun stuff that you typically do around the holidays. And it just caught up to us a little bit. And yeah. so now that we're, now we're on top of it and we just made sure that we cleaned out the diet, got everything super tight and, and the root cause was now removed. And then we use palliative things like the sinus flushing, like the sinus irrigation to help. And I get parents that come in and write to me or patients that write to me and they're like, well, how do you get your kids to do that? And honestly, the big thing is, as a parent, don't project your insecurity about something to your kid. Most parents are projecting, ah, oh, that looks painful. That looks difficult. Do it yourself <laughs> uh, without your kid there. Get comfortable around it. So then when you're ready to do it, like, look, and you, you like, you do it. Ah, oh, it feels so good. Ah, oh. and you just kind of like talk about how good it feels. And then, you know, your, your husband maybe cheers you on and vice versa. And then you just do it, maybe do it a couple of times. And then you say, all right, we got to do it. It's really important. We want to make sure we don't have an ear infection. Remember how bad that feels. And you just, you lean on those pain points and you just try to make it cool and acceptable. But I'll tell you the first time I think we did it with my son Hudson, he was like maybe six to eight months old. And you know, someone held his arm behind his back and we just did like a quick one to two seconds and then pause in between, blow your nose and then one to two seconds. And then you blow your nose and they, they do kind of feel like they're drowning initially, but it's only a second or two, not a big deal. When I'll do it, I'll do about three seconds worth. I get all the mucus up, blow my nose, and then do it again, blow my nose, and then I'll do the x -Clear spray at the end to kind of coat that mucous membrane, break up the biofilms. Normally, I'll do the x -Clear rescue before, wait a couple of minutes. That loosens all the crud up. Now, when I flush, everything comes out. And then at the end, once it's flushed, then I'll do it, you know, one more spray in each nose to let it sit, which then helps with the inflammation and knocks the microbes. And my wife will say, well, my nose isn't congested. It's like, well, honey, the, the deal is that's where the viruses replicate and grow. And so even if you're not super congested, just getting the viral load down can help with the symptoms and the inflammation. So I always recommend even if you're not congested, still do that because most upper respiratory tract issues, most common cold, rhinoviruses, RSV, flu, a lot of these things are going to hibernate in the sinus cavity and grow and multiply there. So if you coat that with saline, there's studies that showing that that will break down the, um, the bacteria 
And then also if you add in like a little bit of iodine in there, that's also going to help with the viruses. And I also, my other, my other trick, my functional medicine trick on top of that is once you wash out the nose, do the x layer, do a little squirt right in your mouth and gargle it 15 seconds. Tilt your head yeah. back, let it hit all that mucus cavity, let it hit your adenoids and your tonsils, and then spit it out. And that will grab all that mucus. It's shown in vivo, in vitro to actually, in, with patients to help knock down staph, knock down strep, and help with the viruses and help get the mucus out. So now you're not coughing. That cilia is not going to be as irritated and you're not going to be hacking up a lung all day. Yeah, well said. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, we had a comment. Love your guys' work. I'm dealing with horrible mold and mycotoxin, especially in my gut. I'm using uh, bio busters. That's probably biofilm busters, antifungals, and binders. I think I developed IBS though. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest one we didn't talk about, which is that if you are battling mold, maybe your office, your home, your workplace, your child's school, maybe there is a mold issue. Obviously, we know in the literature that's going to keep your immune system suppressed and you're going to battle all sorts of new issues sooner because your immune system is knocked down. So it would be important if you can, even if you just like burn some of the candles that we sell or if you have a, the ability to put in uh, a fresh air ventilation system and dilute the toxicity. We've done whole podcast on mold and how to treat that in terms of the house and also the gut. So look at those episodes. But yeah, it is true that mold is going to keep you suppressed. So if you're battling ongoing exposure, hopefully you can do something to remedy that. And even if you can't, hopefully you're at least keeping up with the NAC and the binders to try and just stay afloat. Like if your rate of exposure is high and your rate of treatment is low, you're going to get worse. But if you can kind of match or even beat the rate of exposure, hopefully you'll win the game and you'll, you'll pull out of this. Absolutely. And I just put down in the description here and I'll put it down below in the pinned comments is all the different, um, Amazon links to the different sinus flush and irrigation and, and, and X layer products that I used for, you know, keeping the sinuses cleaned out, probidone iodine, the type of irrigation bottles. So I'll put those in there so you guys don't have to hunt down for it because I've had to try it all to figure out what's the best. And then also just the big thing is, um, yeah, as, as a parent, you know, it's, it's important. A lot of these things your kids may not want to do out of the gate. And so I always tell like parenting 101 is, is giving your kids what they need, not what they want. And so just kind of remember that and then just start to get them used to it by making sure you and your partner, spouse are doing this around your kids to make it cool and make it acceptable. And then they're, they're going to want to be part of it too. So really key, especially if you have young kids, their immune systems are blank slates and they're going to get a lot of bugs and they're going to bring it back home to you. Evan and I are in the thick of that right now. And so that's just part of them building up their immune system. And so the more you take care of them, you can prevent these things from going the distance and needing antibiotics. Yeah. And change your freaking filter in your house, your HVAC filter. I saw my neighbor across the road finally changing his air filter for it looked like the first time ever. My God, that thing was covered in dust. I'm like, dude, don't hold your breath while you're putting that thing in the garbage can. So make sure you're obviously changing your HVAC filters. And there's some debate about how high of a rating you need to put in your HVAC filter. But I would say something at least like a MERV 7, a MERV 8, a MERV 9. I mean, you can go all the way up to like MERV 16. It does put more stress on your system. But if you can't afford or if you don't have any standalone air purifier units, at least if your HVAC filter is replaced often and it's a decent quality, you know, hopefully that's going to reduce what you're exposed to. And then in your car, you know, we got an oil change and luckily they were like, Hey, would you like a new cabin air filter? Yes, absolutely. So have new cabin air filters put in your car. You're looking at 20 bucks, but these are the simple things that can reduce your exposures as you're driving to work. For example, we had a woman every day, by the time she got to work, she had a Mercedes. By the time she got to work every day, she had a headache and had sinus issues. Well, it turns out Mercedes did a recall on 2.5 million cars for yep. mold growing in the HVAC unit. So little Same things with like the Prius. that. Same with the oh, Prius, really? same okay. thing. And also too, if you have a good, um, you know, good vacuum, like a, a Melee or something, you can always, or a Dyson, you can always take those filters and vacuum out both sides of them to extend life. Or if you have a little air compressor, take it outside and just shoot some air through it on both sides. That, that will clean it out and give it some extra life too. And also too, you know, definitely invest in at least a HEPA filter for your kid's room and your room. I mean, you, you can go the full nine yards and do the ones that we like, the Air Doctor or the Austin Air, or you can go a little bit more budget friendly and do the Win-X from Costco. Uh, if you're on tight budget, something is better than nothing. And you'll see once you get a good quality HEPA filter and you run that a month or two and you see the kind of junk that's left in it, it's it's a no brainer why that's essential. Yeah, our house, I mean, the, the air in our house is so crisp with all these filters and all the rooms. It's like, it's not ozone, but for me, it's it smells like you're at a waterfall. Like it's very fresh and crisp. And obviously, 
you know, reducing those airborne toxins. So obviously if you're still burning toxic candles, get rid of that crap. If you're still using synthetic fragrance in your laundry and dryer sheets and fabric softeners, get rid of that crap. If you're using Glade plugins, we can't be friends, so unfriend me. Uh, if you're <laughs> using like those disgusting, remember those little nasty gel things that people would sit on top of their toilet? It's like that gel Dude. air freshener. Oh, unless you get one that's essential oil based with the sticks coming up. If it's not essential oil, it's nasty. Or also, man, what is up with these Uber drivers or Lyft drivers with these air fresheners that are just so nasty? I'm just like, man, it's like at least get one that maybe has essential oils or get like, um, you know, one of these activated charcoal bean bags that you can put on the, in the car that'll absorb some of the smell. But you go in some of these Ubers and that you just come out smelling just disgusting with these little, you know, the little trees they hang in the, on the yeah. dash. Oh, I don't know. If, I don't know. If, I don't know if you remember this. It would have been seven, eight years ago now, but I made a petition on change.org yes. to ban air fresheners in Uber. It got like 3000 signatures and everybody was sharing it. And I was like, Hey, this might take off to where, you know, on your app, you could request like fragrance free, you know, but it, it never went anywhere. Oh, I, I don't know why that's not at least an option, man, because yeah. you get out of some of these cars and I'm just like, Oh, I take a 30 ride of the 30 minute ride to the airport. And you just like stink. I know. Or you, you can tell like, Someone smokes when they when they don't drive, and then they're trying to cover it up with stuff, and then you get this yeah. like haphazard glade mixed smoke smell, and you're like, it's gross. Yeah, so so car air fresheners, those got to go. You're literally poisoning you, uh, your family, etc. Uh, and I think these are these are some of the little lifestyle habits that you and I, uh, for us, it's just normal. But you'll still see a guy driving down the street, and he'll have thirty of those trees in his car. Dude, I mean, it's crazy. He's just poisoning himself. And this stuff is creating inflammation in the lungs. This is likely reducing fertility as well. If you look at the chemicals in fragrance and how this affects your, your sperm, you know, this could go into a tangent, but definitely immune function will be suppressed due to airborne VOCs and these toxins. Yep, 100%. And so in general, when you're dealing with any of these issues, especially sinuses and throat, most throat issues come from post nasal drip. And so if you can deal with the sinuses, you deal with the nose, that's going to help with the mucus dripping downstream. So you thin out the mucus, you can flush it better. That deals with the oxidative stress from all the free radicals uh, creating that viral load. Plus when you start to have all this inflammation, you activate, you know, things, uh, nuclear factor kappa beta, you toll like receptors. These are all things that kind of increase cytokines and you can, you're more likely to have this cytokine storm of inflammation. So the more you keep your immune system regulated with the glutathione building blocks from NAC and glutathione, when you do things like vitamin D, when you do medicinal mushrooms, that can keep your immune system a little bit more in check. And then you do a really good solid gargle that keeps a lot of that junk from growing. And uh, also, Having a really good cough drop. I'm a big fan of the Ricola cough drops. I'll do the Stevia sugar-free ones. So I'll do the Stevia sugar-free ones. They have the Mountain Herb. It's a Stevia sweetened one. Or they have the um, the Sorbitol. It's a sugar-based alcohol for the for the lemon Mountain Herb. That's a nice one too. So there's a lemon and there's a Mountain Herb one. So we'll do those in my house because those are loaded with 10 different herbs. That formula has been around for over 100 years. There's a reason why it's been around for over 100 years, right? And so there's some good herbs in there, some licorice and some elderberry and hyssop and lemon balm. There's some really good herbs that have a mucilaginous supporting anti-inflammatory effect as well as an antiviral effect. So it's good to have something that you're, you're, you're sucking on all day to keep that inflammation down. And then also add in the ginger tea, some juice ginger and add some manuka honey to really help that throat and that help keep the bacteria down a little bit too. Yeah, well said. So, you know, in summary, if you've been battling this stuff and you've tried to hit it acutely and you're still suffering, you know, obviously we're, we're trying to, to simplify and break things down for everyone, but there could be deeper maso activation, histamine intolerance, gut dysbiosis, immune dysfunction problems, uh, Lyme and co-infections, mold toxicity, mycotoxins, candida, just to name a few. And these are some of the functional medicine roadblocks, we call it, that we help you to investigate. And we can do some functional medicine labs on you at home where we can investigate your situation, help you to identify your big roadblocks, and then we can chip away at those using these different natural formulas we're describing. So if you've done everything you can on your own, you've exhausted those things, you've tried diet tweaks and every vitamin you could find in the immune section at Whole Foods and you're still suffering, you know, reach out to one of us and we'd be happy to help. You could get a hold of Dr. J, that's Justin Marcajani at justinhealth.com. And there's consults available worldwide with both of us. We'd be happy to help. Mine is evanbrand.com. And we'd love to help you all. We, we love doing this stuff. And, you know, really, if you look at our conversation from 
the outsider, really what we're trying to do is just empower you. And we're trying to give you the tools and the confidence that you can approach these issues on your own. We've given up so much of our power to the medical establishment in the sense that we're afraid and we're seeking someone to save us. But unfortunately, there's no one going to save you. And even if you end up at the best, most prestigious place, Mayo Clinic, wherever, I've heard a lot of disappointed clients that have visited those places and they're still getting conventional strategies, which are not working as well due to the overuse of antibiotics. Candida is now becoming a super bug. You could type in CDC Candida. You could read even Candida is yep. becoming more resistant to antifungal medication. And this is something we're not afraid of because we see it every single day in the trenches. So we'd be happy to help you and do some consults. And I gave you guys a story about my son and how I, I filled that prescription only because I was out of town and I wanted out, out of the country, really. I just wanted to make sure um, we had a backup plan. I didn't want to throw that all on his Nana to deal with, um, but we were able to knock it out within a day. It was totally stabilized. Um, we just had it as a backup plan. And so, and again, if you have to have antibiotics, put that at the last thing on the list, do the other top 10 things first, and more than likely you won't have to, to do that. And if you have to do antibiotics, make sure you do probiotics with it and afterwards for at least a month to really work on repopulating. And then someone wrote in the comments, I want to hit this because this is, this is a big deal, right? This is definitely a big thing. Someone wrote that um, my attempts to inform um, essentially to help with her grandkids or his grandkids, um, the parents were not receptive of diet changes or any of the recommendations because they don't have a great diet. And it all starts with the diet. And so the big thing when it comes to a lot of the sinus and ear stuff is you have to get the processed sugar out and you have to get the dairy out um, and, and, you know, meat, some vegetables, maybe a little bit of safe starch, maybe some fruit. That's going to be fine for kids, especially if, you know, kids are more active, but that's, it starts there. Most people, they don't eat good themselves. And so by having to change their kid's diet, that means they have to confront their diet and, and their crummy diet. And that's hard for them. And so most people just kind of project and just kind of pass on what they do to their kids and they aren't willing to, to look at that. And so it, it causes them to have to look in the mirror a little bit closer and they want to avoid a lot of that. Agreed. Well, and some people think that loving their kids and rewarding their kids is like going for the pizza, the ice cream, the cookies, the cupcakes, the cake, you know, like you've done something so good. Here you go, sweetie. Here's your treat. The reality is there's so many good choices now that are not sugar filled things that are like grain free recipes for pancakes. And, you know, like you mentioned, some of the more naturally sweetened cough drops, for example. So it's really easy to avoid this stuff. But you're right. I think for some people, it's it's too uncomfortable because they're so stuck in their ways. But, you know, my, my end all be all response to that is like, they have to suffer enough to listen until you're so miserable, you might not listen. And unfortunately, a lot of people have to hit rock bottom first before they have to really think, okay, something's wrong with my diet. Now it's my turn. And here we are in 2024, maybe people have already set New Year's resolutions and maybe they're already giving up on those and they're like, oh, I'm too tired, maybe next year. But I would just encourage you to just try to take away some of the things we're teaching here. Maybe you dedicate the next month, you're, you're going to focus on doing animal protein with every meal and you're going to get rid of dairy for one month. Maybe butter. I do butter every day. It should be fine. But uh, if you're really sick, maybe skip the butter, just go ghee for a month. And maybe, maybe yeah. that's it. Yep. And you know, you got to look at things, um, holistically. So, you know, we'll do every now and then I'll take my kids to Andy ice cream and just get like a nice kid size, um, vanilla custard without anything on it. Maybe like one cherry just to kind of make my kids feel like they're, <laughs> they're kids and give them that little bit of a feeling of a, you know, just doing something that's different than normal, but you got to time it up and you got to say, Oh, are they, are they sick? Are there bugs going around? And you have to just time it up. Oh, there's a lot of immune stress. Maybe we skip that and we do something that's a little bit uh, more immune friendly, or we go with the high quality dark chocolates, or we go with the Zollipops, the anti-cavity Zollipops, right? We just try to have um, a bunch of tools in our back pocket. And, you know, it's interesting because we went to that pediatrician just to get that preventative prescription for antibiotics while we were out of the country. And I always ask my wife, which, which, cause she'll do a lot of these things because I'm seeing patients. I was like, do they ask him about his diet? Are you about your diet? Do they, do they inquire about any of these other things? It's like, nope. They were just like, yep, this is a middle ear infection, more than likely bacterial. This is it. And it was on to the next. And there was no really inquisition or, you know, interrogation about what's the food like? What's this like? No, no really trying to get additional information to make a lifestyle change. It's just very, all right, on to the next. <clears throat> and so a lot of people go to their, you know, conventional doctor thinking that they know a lot about nutrition or they can give them advice on that. And they really can. They're, you know, very little education in medical school on that. And when it's given, it's usually the food pyramid type of dribble 
that you hear, you know, regarding your, your 10 servings of this, saturated fat's bad, cholesterol's bad, you know, all these different things. And no yeah. emphasis on organic either or GMOs. Of course, of course. So uh, if you need help, reach out. Like I said, we're happy to work with you. We help people around the world and we have professional supplements that we manufacture to help people. So there are some recommended products like we have some microbiome supports that have some herbal antivirals in them. Uh, we have some oregano type products. So Justin and I will put a couple of links. So wherever you're listening or watching, whether it's on his his side or on my side, if we repost this, you know, we'll have links to where you can check out some of these products. And if you need a little bit of hand holding, it's fine. We'll likely save you some medical bills. You'll pay for a couple consults, but we'll teach you so much. Yeah. And also people were talking about the, the sinuses being dry. First thing is this time of year, it's going to be drier from a humidity standpoint. I could say if you have a, a humidifier for your house, you could always put that on. I always get a little bit worried about maybe potentially getting some mold in there uh, with overdoing it. And so what I recommend too is get a nebulizer and put some saline, some straight saline in there and just breathe five, 10 minutes of straight up saline into your lungs, into your sinuses, that will help. I think even just a sinus spray, that saline base will also rehydrate kind of like eye drops would rehydrate dry eyes. So I think those would be your first steps. And then worst case, you could always get a, you know, a localized dehumidifier. Uh, they have ones that will emanate from like a little bowl in front and then you just put your face over it and just breathe in. I think you can also do it from a travel-based nebulizer too. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Any thoughts on that? No, I love it. I think nebulizers makes more sense. I mean, you're hitting it right at the source rather than right you're there. trying to fill the room with the whole humidity. room. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that's good. And also sometimes things like the, the, the Vicks Vapor Rub can be pretty good too, or some kind of an essential oil blend with peppermint and these type of things. Breathing that in can be very helpful and open up the sinuses and provide some, some hydration too. So I like that. Yep. Cool. Anything else, Evan, you want to highlight? And then make sure you guys, evanbrand.com, you know, Evan's available worldwide. We try to provide functional medicine support for you guys worldwide. So if you, you want to take the next step or you want more uh, advice when we work with people that have functional medicine needs, we're still able to kind of adapt to some of the acute needs like the colds and the sinus issues. We're pretty adept at using functional medicine also acutely, kind of like we're talking about here. For sure. Uh, well, I would just tell people if they have any comments or questions for us or topics that they want us to cover, we're open to it. We've put out over 500, I lost track, 600 pieces of content in the last decade. There's so much out there, but we're always happy to explore these things with you. And, you know, we teach what we learn along the way as parents and as practitioners and as fellow humans. So we're all in this thing together. We look forward to helping to continue to empower you on your journey to be the best version of yourself you can possibly be. Absolutely. We'll put links down below, guys, whether it's on Evans or mine for some of the things that we talked about in this podcast. Hope you enjoy. And please, thumbs up. Hit the bell for notifications of more great content like this. And make sure you share with friends or family if you see the value. Appreciate it, guys. Take it easy. Take care. Bye now.